And I have to say, you know, uh, I'm not a storyboard artist, but I was the trainer for our studio at the beginning for Storyboard Pro because it was easy enough for me to pick up and it was easy enough for me to train. Storyboard Pro is very intuitive. It, and if you know the basic elements of if you're a storyboard artist, what you have to do, all those uh, elements are in the software in a very intuitive way. Um, the SketchUp is very easy to do as well, and there's free tutorials. You can even go on YouTube and download easy tutorials. Now, one, of the, one of the things that the technology has allowed us to do in being all digital is to work with more partners overseas because now we can just FTP files only, we can email files only. And one of the big things that I wanted to do last year, it might even be two years now, is transition some of our studios overseas to a digital pipeline as well. Because paper, especially in our with our Korean partners, is it's just everywhere. Nobody uses CTS. So I was very stubborn and I knew that in order for this, this uh, pipeline to work, we had to get the Korean partners onto CTs. That was like the biggest challenge. So I met with uh, me and Tungu. We went to all the studios in Korea and, and until we found a few studios that were willing to try it. And we spent a lot of time with them, months and months of training to get them to switch over, and they did. Now, it's become this full pipeline where we do some of the work, we give it to our partners in Korea to work digitally for us, and then it comes back to our studio where we just clean everything up, put it all together and assemble. Now, the Korean studios, this is the first time they've ever worked on CTs. This is the first time that they ever held a stylus in their hands, and for them it was a big deal. And now, this was about a year ago, or maybe over a year ago now, and now in Korea it's the big buzz of Cintiqs. Everybody's like, where did you guys, how did you guys learn Cintiqs? How did you guys learn Harmony? You know, like where is this? Now everybody's kind of scared that's still working on paper because they know that Harmony is the new software there, but they're excited at the same time because they know that this is re revolutionizing their own industry. One of the best compliments that was paid to me overseas is that there was a time now where some of the artists, they were starting to feel that the industry was starting to, to wane and die a little bit because a lot of the younger people weren't uh, getting into the industry. If you look at the Korean studios, they're mostly older people. But now, a lot of young people are seeing the tools and the technology and they're getting excited about it because for them it's cool. It's like, wow, I get to sit in front of this huge screen, get to draw in the computer, and it really kind of motivated them to want to learn the software and get into the industry. We don't do a lot of the actual animation in Los Angeles. Quite honestly, there's our skill sets semi-limited. We have some really great animators, but but to find a crew of animators is can be challenging and difficult. Um, we have a small team of animators, but the reason why we work with Korea, Korea's got great animators over there. They have a whole team of animators, and that's why we work with them. The other thing is character design. We have a lot, again, we have a lot of character designers in Los Angeles, but when you work, when, when you're influenced by a lot of the same things in Los Angeles, sometimes you get a lot of the same types of character designs. Um, I like looking outside of LA to other countries because of the different influences that I see in the styles of characters. And we're always looking for different design styles and to look in South America look in here, to look overseas to Southeast Asia for different design styles, that's exciting, that's exciting. Storyboarding is something that we tend to keep very close to the hand because it is a very integral part of the storytelling process and we like to really kind of look over the shoulder of the artist doing it. But sometimes, you know, we do get uh, overwhelmed with the amount of storyboarding we have to do. Uh, sometimes or we need to look outside for more, like, for more help and resources. So storyboarding is something that I would consider going outside of Los Angeles. And the last thing is what we call X sheet prepping. Now it's it's a very technical job, but there's a creative component to it. It's something that I've just been exploring, and I actually want to talk with Joan a little bit more about this 
uh, today actually just because egg sheets and I wish I had an example of what an egg sheet is. We, an egg sheet is short for exposure sheet. And just without getting too technical, animation, there's 24 frames in a second. So we tend to draw a picture every two frames, every one to two frames. So it could be roughly, if you can imagine, for every second of animation, there's probably about 12 drawings. It's a lot of drawings. Now, an exposure sheet tells the animator exactly what to draw. So, for every frame of film, 24 frames in a second, an exposure sheet has 24 lines on it and it spells out exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm done. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I, it, you get the better deal with me. Okay. It will tell you exactly what we have to animate for every second of film. But that art of filling out these exposure sheets is kind of dying and we need some assistance. And I think that's a new area which we can have. An exposure sheet tells the animator when somebody should blink, mm -hmm. how many steps they should take when they're walking. Oh, the mannerisms. Every, to, to the frame. Yeah. So if you see a crowd in the background and you see different incidentals, different characters blinking their eyes, that exposure sheet's telling them when to blink their eyes. It's very, it's, it's, it's very detailed. But the keys to success, in order for us to find the right partners, is stuff that we've always looked for. We were looking always for great quality. We are looking for a reasonable price, because obviously you're competing against a price from other countries and also in Los Angeles and dependability because we, you know, animation is still a business and there are schedules that we have to follow and honor and so reliability is very important for us and the communication is key as well. Uh, there are a lot of studios that we'd like to, that we'd like to work with but sometimes we struggle with the communication factor whether it be a different language, it's key that there's a, a good liaison between the Studios so that we stay step and step in sync. So really, those are some of the areas that I'm just touching on. I'm hoping to get into it deeper with you uh, in terms of how we can work together. Uh, we also want to embrace technology together. Bentobox, as our company, we're always looking to work with studios that have the same vision as us and want to achieve a certain level of quality of animation that meets our standards, but also can follow and fold into our current digital pipeline. So to be digital is very key to us and um, you know that's why I'm here with Joan because Toon Boom is a big part of it.